<laughs> hey, buddy. Colubrids, what are they? If you're talking about scientific terms, a colubrid, it has something to do with, oh my goodness, it has something to do with their ventricle scales and uh, their teeth and all that fun stuff. You can Google it and it'll give you exact definition. It's gonna be a bunch of stuff that you're gonna forget. But basically, a colubrid is a snake that isn't a python and it isn't a boa. And it includes kink snakes, milk snakes, corn snakes, uh, it includes hog noses, it includes pine snakes, it includes uh, bull snakes, it includes dry marcons such as indigos and crebos. And Honestly, they're all really cool, and I want most of them. So, we're gonna go ahead and show you our collection of colubrids. We're gonna show you some projects we're working on, some stuff for you guys to look forward to in the near future, and some stuff for you guys to look forward to in the far future. So, let's go. Welcome to my colubrid room. As you can see here, I've got a very nice looking Okatee corn snake, and the corn snake is the quintessential first colubrid that most pet owners have. For many people, it's their first snake. And it's an excellent choice for a first snake because number one, they're very docile. Number two, they're very good eaters. And number three, they don't get very big, maxing out at about five feet. So this is just one of the ones that we're gonna be reading and we might show you some that have a little bit more uh, genes in it. That's another reason why it's so popular is because there's a lot of genes to work with with this animal. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So what I have here is a palmetto corn snake, and this is just one of the morphs that I was talking about. Now, this guy is very cool because the palmetto gene originally was thought to be a locality found in an area of Florida? Yeah, up in uh, Palmetto. It was proven out to be a recessive trait, and it's just really cool because it's a naturally occurring trait in uh, a very common animal, and it's just something that's really cool. As a matter of fact, when they first found the trait, they didn't know if it was exactly a corn snake or if it was a rat snake or maybe some type of king snake, but it was later proven to be a corn snake trait. And now it is a very common, not very common, but it is a trait that you see quite often in corn snakes that are traded. And it's just an example of a really cool corn snake. So here I have a California king snake. This one is a female. She's about two, maybe three years old. And uh, they, as the name implies, are from California. And um, they're identified by their black and white banding. And this one is just a really nice specimen, nice and clean. King snakes in the wild eat a very wide variety of prey items. They eat rodents as they're fed in captivity, but they also eat lizards, snakes, especially venomous snakes. And something that's really unique about king snakes is that they have a natural immunity to venom and it helps them when they're trying to eat all those venomous snakes. Oh, and this one just pooped in my hand. How fun. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this snake right here is a Mexican black king snake. And uh, again, as the name implies, it's from Mexico and the surrounding regions. And these guys are naturally very high in uh, melanin. And that is because the area that they live in is obviously very hot. And the extra melanin helps them to absorb all that heat during the day. Um, originally, um, if you were to collect a few of these out in the wild, you'd notice that these things aren't quite as pitch black as the captive bred specimens. And that is because they've been line bred to uh, be more and more uh, rich in their darkness. Uh, uh, normally, I actually have one that's a little bit lighter and it's a bit younger than this one. I can show you real quick. It's, I believe, this one right here. As they grow, they become darker and darker, so it's harder to see. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the sides of this guy, you can see some of the white dots poking through there. And that is more common in wild caught specimens. It just so happens that this one hatched out with those white dots on the side. And again, as this thing grows, it's going to turn darker and darker. So when this thing is an adult, it'll probably look pitch black just like the other one did. And uh, yeah, you can see on the belly there, it's got some also white and sort of orange scalation. So it's an interesting snake. But let's go ahead and move on to our next snake. So right here, I have a hypo mosaic Florida king snake. Hypo is a color mutation that uh, reduces the black in the snake. And mosaic is a pattern mutation that reduces the pattern. So as a result, you end up with this gorgeous snake right here. This is a male that's roughly two, three years old, somewhere in that ballpark. 
and he is absolutely stunning as the name implies. They can be found in Florida and also a little bit in Georgia and I believe um, in certain parts of Louisiana. And these, these guys um, do have a pretty good feeding response. Um, pretty much as many times as you'll feed them is as many times as they'll eat. Um, they are king snakes, so the same rules that we talked about with the California and the black king snakes apply. You know, these guys have natural anti-venom. They have um, a generalized diet. They'll eat pretty much whatever comes across their path that is smaller than them. And they're just really cool snakes. And they come in a lot of different varieties of color mutations and pattern mutations. So it's really fun to experiment when it comes to breeding with these guys. And um, the only thing is <laughs> when breeding king snakes, is you have to be careful that they are in breeding mode and not eating mode because sometimes you'll pair a male with a female you'll start off with two snakes and then you'll go in and you'll only have one snake and you'll be like uh oh <laughs> so definitely be careful make sure that you monitor your snakes closely when you pair them up if they are snake eaters so with that being said let's go ahead and move on to our next snake so here i have a hognose snake that is a super arctic which means that it's not only uh, has its color modified, as you can see, it's nice and dark. It's got this pitch black belly, which is just absolutely stunning. It's got these grays and these dark browns on its back. It's a beautiful animal. Not only that, but you can also see that its pattern has been modified where normally it would have banding. It's now uh, more like uh, uh, dots that bleed down the side of its back. It's a really cool example of a super arctic and we're gonna be producing babies probably in the next, probably next year is when we'll have some babies. So be watching out for that if this is something that interests you. Uh, I know I love these guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next snake. What I have here is a Honduran milk snake. Now milk snakes are interesting in that they are a subspecies of king snake. So like the king snake, they also have a generalist diet in that they eat rodents, they eat lizards, frogs, other snakes. However, milk snakes are in their own subspecies and um, they do like to use their pattern and coloration as a defense tactic because they are basically imitating a venomous snake. And these colorations are telling predators, hey, if you come mess with me, I'm gonna envenomate you. But in reality, they're completely harmless and um, they're a great pet. Only thing is they're a little bit more flighty than some other snakes, but they still make great pets and they're highly recommended. Um, this one, like I said, is a Honduran milk snake. And as the name implies, they are from Honduras. And uh, Honduran milk snakes come in a variety of morphs as well. I personally have hypos and albinos. I'm hoping to make some hypo albinos, which are really cool. Look up pictures if you're interested. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to our next snake. So, this impressive animal right here is a black pine snake. Now these guys are pretty scarce. You're not gonna you're not gonna see these guys every day, and many people don't get to see one of these snakes in their lifetime. I'm I'm very lucky to uh, have the privilege of owning it. And as you can see, this thing is just pitch black, and it's just a beautiful specimen. All and uh, a pine snake is very similar to a bull snake and a gopher snake. They're actually a part of the same family, which is Patufus. And um, these guys are also very strong, just like the bull snakes are. And um, just like the bull snakes, after you take them out, they tend to be very good when it comes to handling. I personally haven't been bit by any of my pine snakes, but you know what? There's still a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, usually they're pretty good eaters and they like to eat large meals. Uh, this guy in particular gets a large rat once every three weeks so I give him lots of time to process that meal and to utilize that fat so that way he doesn't become overweight and as you can see this is just a beautiful specimen of a snake. Hopefully next year we're gonna have some babies from this guy and the female that I have so be watching out for that. Let's go ahead and move on to our next pine snake. So here, I have a Mexican pine snake. Now, this guy, I wanted to pull him out just to demonstrate the wide variation in localities. Now, localities are not the same as morphs because morphs are genetic traits, whereas localities are differences that were created uh, by, they were created by environment, environmental requirements. So as you can see, this snake is also a pine snake. However, 
where the other one was pitch black this one has vibrant yellows and some light oranges towards its tail it saddles uh, range from dark brown all the way to uh, sort of a burnt orange and as you can see this is just a beautiful animal whose colors are just out of this world and yet both of those snakes are pine snakes and it's just a result of a difference in um, environmental requirements and as a result this snake from Mexico looks like this and the Mexican uh, not the Mexican, the black pine snake, which is from a different region, looks completely different. And I just wanted to demonstrate that to you guys. Also, I just wanted to show off this really cool snake. So uh, next up, we're gonna show you some really cool dry markons. So let's check those out. So guys, here I have the creme de la creme, the, the cream of the crop it rises to the top. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. This right here is the Eastern Indigo. For many people, this is the snake. And this snake isn't easy to get a hold of for a number of reasons. Number one, because um, in the wild, they are considered an animal of concern, which means they're not necessarily in danger of going extinct. However, it has been noticed that their population has been steadily decreasing. And as a result, um, the government has taken steps to reduce that decrease. And one of the steps that they've taken is encouraging captive breeders to breed their animals and then release them into the wild. Um, we don't participate in that. However, we fully support people who do. We think it's a, a, great, uh, a great idea, a great mission to preserve this beautiful animal and uh, just some quick facts about him. Um, the males do tend to get larger than the females with adult sizes ranging anywhere from eight feet to nine feet. Um, they are generalists just like kink snakes are. So they will eat uh, other snakes, they'll eat frogs, they'll eat rodents, they'll eat, um, what else? Lizards, pretty much anything that they come across, they will eat. And something that's really cool about them and is unique is that uh, like pine snakes, they're a very muscular snake, um, particularly, the, particularly their jaw is very powerful. And they use their jaw to clamp onto their prey and shake their prey around until their prey is just absolutely exhausted and then they'll eat their prey alive. So these guys are really cool, really strong, powerful animals, but at the same time, something else they're known for is being very docile. Even wild caught specimens, when handled in captivity, are very docile for some reason. And it's something that not that people don't understand why. It's just one of the amazing things about this animal that is just how it is. So, hope you enjoyed. All right guys, so here I have a relative of the Eastern Indigo. This is a yellowtail Kribo, and he's wrapping up that pole. Oh, that little jerk. Or should I say big jerk? See the size of this thing. This thing is probably getting close to seven feet. Yellowtail Kribos are the longest dry marcon that there is uh, when you're talking about the family of dry marcon. And uh, these guys, as you can see, as the name implies, have a yellow tail that turn into a tan, that turn into kind of a grayish brownish color. And as you can see, in between the scales, it has that white skin underneath, and it just makes for an absolutely stunning animal. Now, eastern indigos are from uh, the eastern part of North America, Florida, uh, Georgia, Louisiana. These guys, however, are from the northern part of South America. I'm talking Guyana, Suriname, uh, Venezuela, and where they're from, their prey is similar to that of Eastern Indigos. They eat frogs, other snakes, they eat lizards, they eat, same as Eastern Indigos, whatever they come across. Now, as far as temperament goes, Yellowtail Kribos are known to be one of the more aggressive uh, dry markon. And so that's why I'm keeping my eye on this guy more than I did the Eastern, is because I don't fully trust him. He's one of the better ones I have. I do have four. However, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. One of my females is absolutely insane. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and take her out. I'm gonna show you how insane these things can be. So let's check her out. Short. Come on. section of her body she just come on what do we got here Josiah so 
<laughs> As you can see, this is one of my female yellowtail Kribos, and she is not nearly as nice as my male is. And uh, she's going to be turning here in a second to probably try and bite me to get her, to get me away from her. But she is a little bit smaller than my male, as you can probably see on camera. Um, and she was imported a few months ago. We've been feeding her, trying to get her back up to weight. We de her. And she's just looking great, super healthy, super active. As you can see, she's more than happy to give me a feist. And uh, yeah, I'm super looking forward to when we pair up that male with this female and get some absolutely stunning captive bred, captive born yellowtail Kribo babies. So be watching out for that because we're probably going to have them sometime next year around this time. And she just noticed me right there. You can see she was like, wait a second. And yeah, she's just an absolute snake just like the male is. But wild caught and she just happens to be one of those yellowtails that does not like people and that is absolutely okay not every snake has to be nice a lot of people actually say that handling wild yellowtails and wild eastern indigos is great practice for handling cobras because they move in a lot of the same ways and a lot of people think that Kribos and indigos evolved from cobras and that's why they're so similar in their physical traits. So I'm going to go ahead, actually I need to clean her cage so I'm going to go ahead and put her in this trash can here while I, while I take care of her cage. She's just going to go in here temporarily, hopefully not bite me in the face. There we go. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at all my cool colubrids and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Let us know down in the comments what you wanna see. Um, we have boas. Uh, I don't think we've showed our uh, ball pythons yet. If you guys like ball pythons, I know I do. They're, you know, they're, not, they're not everyone's cup of tea, but I like them. Um, we also have our venomous room we showed you the venomous room next door so if you guys want to see that go ahead and leave a comment and we'll see you next time